Today, we are visiting the last Soviet Union state in the whole world. A breakaway state where people don't really consider them as Moldovan, they don't consider themselves as Ukrainian or Russian. Today, we are going to the country that doesn't exist on Google Maps, it doesn't exist on Apple Maps, it doesn't exist basically on every map, but it's got its own country, its own parliament, its own checkpoints, its own currency. This is going to be the country of Transnistria. Moldova, which is Kishinev, um, and we are going to take a bus to the capital city of Transnistria, which is Tiraspol. Now, I've never been to Tiraspol, and I've heard actually it's quite dangerous because of the wars that are currently going on and with Ukraine and everything. So, we got to be a little bit more cautious today. We've got to be really, really cautious. We've got to be really, really careful. This is not a safe trip. I have no idea what's going on in Tiraspol. I have no idea what's going on in Transnistria. But from what I've heard, from what I've heard from locals here, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous. So we're gonna see. We're gonna go ahead and check it out and see for ourselves what is the situation like in Transnistria, what is the situation like in Tiraspol. So let's go ahead and get started with our day. Tiraspol. We're officially on the bus. I think this is the bus of Tiraspol. I didn't buy a ticket, so I think it's the right one. But uh, it should be about two hours, and we will be in a breakaway state of Moldova. About an hour and a half later, we've left Kishinev and we've come to a completely different country. I had my passport, I had to show my passport, we crossed basically an international border. We are now officially in Transnistria, which is crazy to me. This is a, it's, it's a country, but it's not recognized by anybody, but it has its own currency, it has its own government, it has its own laws, it has everything on its own. And it's incredible that we are now here in the capital city, Tiraspol. Um, I just checked into a little hostel. It's a beautiful little hostel run by a little grandmother. It's got everything you need, shower, Wi-Fi, everything's good. But let's go ahead. I got my money changed. They use the Transnistrian ruble here, which is different from the Moldovan lei. And let's go ahead and start exploring the city. Now, Transnistria many, many years ago declared itself to be part of the U USSR. But the USSR never really admitted them as a thing. But they've sort of just kept on holding on to that hope that they are part of the USSR, that they are, you know, part of that communist regime. And everything here just feels like you've stepped back in time, you know, 30 years, and you're back in the USSR. I mean, look at this playground here. We have a Transnistrian playground where little Transnistrian children will play. And you see, it's like the old, rusty, Soviet-style playground. It's fascinating to me that this sort of place still exists. It's something you would expect in, like, Chernobyl or something, something that was, you know, many, many years long gone. But this sort of playground here, this is where children in, in, in Transnistria still play. It, it, it's incredible to me. I mean, even the buildings, I mean, that's, that's as Soviet as it gets. But for me, this is why I came to Transnistria. This is why I came to Tiraspol. I wanted to see what it was like. And for me, it's just been enlightening to see it all. It looks like Paris has got competition because Tiraspol has its own little Eiffel Tower, huh? Now, in the previous video, when we were in Kishinev, we saw the Nativity Church, the Nativity Cathedral in Kishinev, and that was beautiful. Well. Tiraspol here in Transnistria has its own little nativity church. So let's go in and see what the nativity church here looks like. The church was great, but I just got kicked out by a, a very aggressive 
Transnistrian babushka who basically was like, Photographia, Photographia, and she just kept yelling at me and I was like, okay, I'll go. But that is a very beautiful church on the inside and you can tell it is not the same as like the Serbian Orthodox or the Romanian Orthodox churches. It's much brighter, it's very different, the colors are very, very vibrant, um, but it is very beautiful. I don't think it is very old. I actually think it's relatively new of a church. Avoid the Transnistrian babushka when you come to this church. If you come to Tiraspol, she's quite aggressive and you do not want to mess with her. If you notice right behind me, there is a green building, a completely green building. The gates are green, the entrance are green, everything's green. And the reason it's green is because this is the green market. It is the main market here in Tiraspol. Why is it green? I honestly have no clue, but let's go inside and see what a local market is like here in Tiraspol, see what people are buying, see what the local produce is like, and just have a better sense of what life is like here in Tiraspol. I'm currently hiding in a corner because there are some like security guards who are going around and like they've told me multiple times not to film so I try not to get caught but this is the green market this is the main municipal market you see behind me there are rows and rows of stalls selling every produce imaginable fruits vegetables honey a lot of honey a lot of pickles a lot of candies everything it's hectic there's a lot of people everybody's doing their morning shopping here and everybody's just buying things everything's you know, and, and it's quite affordable because they're charging in Transnistria in ruble, so it's quite a good price actually. Um, for any fresh fruits, fresh vegetables and things like that. I haven't seen any meat or fish, and that might just be simply because Tiraspol's not really near the ocean. Fruits and the vegetables here, the produce looks excellent. It's probably just grown, you know, a couple miles outside of the city. You know, there's so much farmland here that it's just incredible how fresh the produce is. So if you're looking for fresh fruits, fresh vegetables here in Transnistria, this is definitely a place to come and get it because it looks fresh. So the green market is right behind me. You see that big green building? That's the green market. Now this street right in front of the green market is called Karl Marx Street, ironically. Which makes sense considering, you know, the history of Transnistria and the importance of Lenin and Karl Marx and people like that. And now we've just come over here onto the other side and it's this beautiful park. It's Catherine Park. Um, we've got these beautiful water fountains, these arches. It's very, very simple. There's not a lot to it. You've got a little beautiful walking area, pedestrian zone. You've got fountains, little stands selling popcorn and things like that. I feel so out of place. I feel like I'm in a place where I shouldn't be. Like if you go to North Korea, you shouldn't be in North Korea. But this is incredible. Um, but the park is really simple, really, really nice, really peaceful. And you just got families and kids walking around and enjoying the day here in Tiras. If you walk a little bit down farther into the park, we get to this statue right here. This is a statue of Subarov. Um, very, very big on top of a horse who's very, very important here to transition. You'll notice you don't see him anywhere in Moldova. You don't see him anywhere in Kishinev. It's because he's important to Transnistria. This is not really the same country anymore. It, Transnistria does exist. This is Tiraspol. This is a different country. Shubarov was important to Transnistria, but he didn't really, you know, he wasn't Moldovan. He, he wasn't really, you know, the people here don't identify him as Moldovan. They consider him as Transnistrian. They consider him as one of them, as one of those from Tiraspol. Um, which is why you see the, the statues and the people that they, they, they uh, venerate here in this country are different from the people that they venerate in Moldova. So you see the contrast, you see the difference, and you see that they're not really the same country, even though other countries might not recognize Transnistria. It very much is its own country and it kind of is its own thing. Suvorov Square and the Suvorov statue is this. This, I told you, the government of Transnistria is its own separate government and the government building is right behind me. This is where the government works. This is where decisions are made. This is where laws are passed, all of that. And it's shocking to see that if you look at the top of the building, you won't see a Moldovan flag. What you will see is a Transnistrian flag and a Russian flag. So that should give you an idea on what the position, the political position of Transnistria is. They're not very Western friendly. They're not very EU friendly. They're not very Moldova fr uh, friendly, frankly. They're very, very Russian oriented. And of course, at the front, 
a statue of Lenin. Now, if you watched my Kishinaw video, you'll realize the statue of Lenin was hidden away inside a park, not very apparent. Um, but here, right in front of the building, proudly standing, I think that is the literal best reflection of how people here in Transnistria perceive Lenin, perceive communism, perceive this union, uh, the USSR, and that whole era of time as well. So very, very interesting to see that right here in front of the massive Soviet era building. I mean, that's the government. That right there is the government of Transnistria. That is incredible. And of course, a statue of Lenin just makes it better. Across from that street, I mean, you can see the parliament, the government building is right behind me still. But this is a massive memorial to uh, Transnistria, and I'll tell you what it's about. The first one over here, you can see 1941 to 1945. This is a commemoration of World War II. So this was actually built during the Soviet era um, for World War II. Remember, Soviets were fighting in World War II as well. They were trying to beat the Nazis. So that is a memorial to beating the Nazis and the sacrifices that were made here in Transnistria for the freedom of the Western world. Now. That over there, however, is another memorial that's from a different period. You'll notice that the years are 1990s and 1992. That is the breakup of Transnistria away from Moldova. That is when Transnistria said, you know, we are our own independent nation. Um, and that's when they sort of established themselves as a country. Now, of course, like I said, barely anybody actually recognizes the state of Transnistria as its own country, but they still have a memorial here that reflects the commitment they have to their history and their independence from Moldova. So those are two memorials that are here. On the other side behind me, there is an eternal flame. Of course, that is just an eternal flame for the, the, the people of Transnistria, for the country of Transnistria, and the pride that the people here hold in being Transnistrian. Now, if you're wondering what I'm sitting on, on a tank. A kid come up here and I asked the local and they're like, oh yeah, absolutely, everybody climbs on the tank. So I was like, okay, I might as well climb the tank. This was a tank that was fished out of the river, which is right over there. Um, it was a World War II tank. So this is a Nazi tank that they sort of um, brought back in today. It is sort of a memory of the victory over the Nazi. I'm literally walking on a Nazi era tank. Like that's crazy to me. I, I never thought that one day I'd be doing that in the middle of a Soviet country in Eastern Europe, but that is pretty insane. Next up here, we've come to another one of these classic Soviet buildings here in Transnistria. This right behind me is actually the House of Soviet. So it literally has the word Soviet in its name. Today, it is the city hall of Tiraspol. It is the city hall and at the front of it, you can see Obviously, there's another statue of the great Vladimir Lenin, and there's no shame in it. There's not like, you're not trying to hide it. I don't think you're going to really find that anywhere else, honestly, in all of Europe. Um, but the structure itself is very, very Soviet. You've got that clock, which looks like a classic Soviet clock, the numbers, the, the arms of the, of the clock. But it's really, really fascinating to me, really impressive. Um, I don't think you're actually allowed to go inside it. It's, it's today, it's an office. It's, 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 it's the city hall. So it's used as the city hall's office. Um, but the building itself, magnificent, beautiful, and definitely something that you can just stop by when you're here in Transnistria. Now, earlier in the day, we had come from the green market, which you can see is that green building all the way over there, come down to Sudorov Square, and I had said that that park was known as Yekaterinsky Park. And you might be wondering, why is it called Catherine Square? Why is it called Yekaterinsky Park? And I'll tell you why. Because of this statue right behind me. This is a statue of Catherine the Great, one of the greatest rulers in Russian history. And what you'll realize is that everything here in Transnistria in Tiraspol is like a memento it's like a commitment to russia to russian history to the soviet union like there's not a single thing that's not lenin karl marx or you know Catherine the great related like something has to be connected to russia has to be connected to the ccp cccp in some way shape or form but the park in which the statue is located is really really quiet it's just a calm little park 
and you know there are kids running around there are kids like driving little cars and stuff there's a playground and everything so it's really really quiet and you're starting to realize life in Tiraspol yes they live under a communist regime yes they live under a system where it is still committed to the USSR where there's sort of a breakaway state that wants to be part of Russia but life is simple here life is good life is very very calm people just enjoy the warm weather people are enjoying the parks and people are simply are just enjoying the life that they have here in Transnistria at the end of the park I mean Catherine the Great is literally sitting right over there but once you come to the end of the park you actually come to the beautiful river right here this sort of walkway it's a beautiful promenade and it's a great place you've got music you've got live music you've got people playing the accordion it's just a really really good vibe this river right here actually is the Dniester River so this is the one that actually flows into Ukraine uh, later it empties out into the Black Sea it's so peaceful it's quiet it's absolutely stunning uh, but uh, it's just so surprising. You'd expect, you know, a gray communist state, but no, it's a, it's a very vibrant, it's, it's, it's a city, it's a country full of very lively people, very happy people. I mean, look at all this greenery here. You wouldn't expect this from Transnistria. I wasn't expecting this from Transnistria, Transnistria at least. And then a, a lot of this sort of beautiful walkway with a river behind me. It, it's almost just like perfect. It's, it's such a beautiful place to be. like that the sun has truly set over Transnistria over Tiraspol you can see the moon is actually just coming out so it is the end of the day here in this beautiful city um, we started this day in Kishinev and now we've ended it in a city which is the capital of a breakaway communist state that claims to be one of the members of the USSR and continues to have statues of Lenin and commitments to Russia and its history everywhere around the city. Yes, this is not a free country. This is not Western Europe. This is not where there's a free liberal media where everything, you know, everybody has freedoms. It's very different, but at the same time, when you talk to people, people are happy to be here. People are happy to be Transnistrian and they're proud to be Transnistrian. The system, the laws, the government, the passport, nobody recognizes it. And it's a real struggle for those who are living here to really try and move forward. They're making about $300 a day, or sorry, $300 a month in the city. And the countryside is even lower than that. And, and people are trying their best. People are really, really trying to make ends meet. They're trying to move their country in the direction that they want. And it's hard when there's all this pressure to move westward. I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to visit a country that doesn't technically exist on Google Maps, a country that doesn't really play by Western rule books, a country that's not recognized really anywhere else in the world. When you try to search up Transnistrian rubles on Google, it doesn't exist. My main tips for Transnistria is that if you come here, people say that it's very dangerous. I haven't felt danger anywhere. It's been safe, it's been incredibly nice. Everybody here is just really, really nice because they don't really get that many tourists. So the fact that people come and visit, you will be special. People will come up to you, people will try and talk to you. And it's awesome. It's a great experience that people will say thank you for visiting our country. And I think that sort of humility and the willingness to tell people about their experiences is something really special. Whether they're young, whether they're old, Transnistrians all have a very similar perspective on life. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. This is the country that doesn't exist anywhere on Google Maps. It doesn't exist as a country. Nobody really knows what it is. Transnistrians don't even know really what it is, but it exists. And that's the important thing. And there are real people and real stories that are told here in this country. That's all I have for you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.